your shield because there's no shield stopping in this game. So I think the dash shield is you have to do like a dash shield where where you hold the shield forward. It's like frame four or something, yeah. and then frame fifteen normally. It's ridiculously slow. Yeah, exactly. So in my opinion, how to really play against the Belmonts? Since their only you know area to hit you is that mid range because of the width. If you are out of that range, yeah, okay, you could you could play however you want, but you know. T3 Dom wants you in that mid range, so he's gonna approach you. So what you could do is you could walk in, you could walk shield because you know F tilt a little bit laggy, and then you could walk again before you have to shield again when he's you know gonna dash back and shield. So that's how you play the long game of okay, I'm gonna slowly get all this center stage for them to hit you with the burst option like dash attack, run up down tilt and things like that. But you have to be really careful with the dash attack from Dom or the down tilt from Dom to get to the other side. But getting into game one. Battlefield, what do you think about this kind of pick? Uh, this pick? I think this pick is uh, good. Fire Emblem or Sword characters in general do succeed on this stage. And uh, same thing with Richter. I think the platforms really help with uh, his lack of landing options um, in the jungle scenarios. Oh, really good Nair to kind of catch him off guard. But you can kind of see right now, uh, Dom is playing that long range game. And once he gets into that mid range, that's when he goes in for that dash grab. That's when he goes in for that uh, forward tilt. But right now, Good job from David, keeping center stage, trying to read his normal getup with the dash check, but nothing just yet. Oh, and finding these nares to punish uh, T3 Drum's aggression or um, trying to dash in to kind of close the distance. Um, and very good ledge trapping from David as well is going to help a lot. And yeah, that's going to be the susceptibility of um, getting parried by um, an Ike because he does have the range to whip punish and great back air covering that short hop, and he already has a very early lead here. Yeah, he doesn't have a double jump though, so he has to be really careful trying to recover against C3 Dom. Fantastic high recovery with the side B, and like you said right now, the up coming out from C3 Dom. I'm not sure if uh, the Richter wants uh, the fire to be on the platform for the ledge trap, or maybe that's just a little bit of a miscalculation on Dom's end, but um, you know, he's been getting off the ledge pretty uh, easily here, and as I say that, finding a holy water on the um, normal getup to get the forward smash. Yeah, I was going to say, so when you are getting ledge trapped by T3 Dom, especially when he has that uh, that Holy Water on the field, you kind of have to just react to that F smash and re not really react to the Holy Water at all. If you get hit by the Holy Water and you fall off stage, yeah, you get you get to go back on stage uh, or get ledge trapped again, but that's another chance at life. Whereas if you try to do an option, boom, you get hit by that forward smash. And you can see right now, T3 Dom, after getting that lead or, you know, getting that stock, having so much momentum back now. But David, with his uh, very strong uh, defensive game, finding these run-up parries to close the distance between Dom and him, and uh, kind of finding these uh, conversions into big percent. Back throw, sending him into the corner. Dom has to get off this uh, ledge or corner against um, I, a character that has very, very strong kill options. What I'm kind of interested in waiting for is David can actually kill T3 Dom right now with the up B out of shield from the ledge if he reads the, uh, you know, jump up forward air that Dom's really famous on, you know, using. Oh, but gets the falling there into up air. Very classic from Ike. And now David's still in the lead, trying to, you know, get a little bit more mileage out of this, uh, out of this stock. Forward throw from Dom, though, now has a ledge pressure or a ledge trap situation that he likes, but a little bit of a misplay with those projectiles. And now David has another chance at living on extending the lead on the second stock. His parries are absolutely amazing on these uh, whips. Yeah, exactly. David having like getting the timing so well against Dom and these F tilts doing so well, too. I really want to see him kind of go off and try to edge guard him because if you're in between, I believe, the whip and uh, T3 Dom, yeah, you're able to you know get hit by the whip but he doesn't have that ability to recover again. So then you could go off and parry the, or I mean, sorry, counter the up B from Dom. Interesting choice to go for the forward tilt. I wanted to see maybe an up B there. And He's dead. Dom, forward throw? Yeah, yep. I didn't know that's a kill throw. Actually. Yeah, it, it's, it's a kill throw because the thing is, that's, that's basically Sakurai saying, yo, if you get grabbed by this character whose whole purpose is to keep you away, like at mid range, you deserve to die. <laughs> But you kind of see right now T3 Dom playing in the back for 94%. But this could change super, super quick if Dom, you know, plays a lot slower, tries to wait for David to do an unsafe approach option. And I absolutely love the play to just stay on the top platform. Uh, Dom doesn't really have an option to contest that, except for a very committal up air that only really covers like a small portion of the platform. And David's really using this well here, um, just playing with the platforms to avoid these projectiles. Great wave land from Dom and up to cover the uh, jump back to the top platform from David. Ooh, this is looking really scary now. So David kind of needs to do something a little bit much because right now, since he's giving Dom so much space, Dom is able to set up, kind of poke him under the ledge a little bit, kind of getting him with the small comeback mechanics. 
And now this is super, super hard. Getting ledge trapped by Dom. Great parry. No punish with the dash. Uh, dash attack, even off of a parry, not finding the frame data. Up tilt, up air, not going to be able to kill. This is so scary for David. Side B back to the ledge. He's in a ledge oh, pressure. Oh, yeah. That's... He missed, he missed one crucial <coughs> punish. When uh, Dom landed on the top platform, he went for back air instead of up air. Up air could have definitely done it there. Uh, but missing just a, just a small misplay and giving uh, Dom the room he needs to make that comeback. And a very, very disciplined play from Dom to not overcommit to try to go for the platform. There was so much time on the clock that you can't really play for the condition of a timeout. So he just said, you know what? I'm going to wait. And eventually, David is going to want to make some sort of play to take the stock. And, you know, you see there a little bit of a miscue, and that's going to that's gonna cost you a uh, big time, especially against a, a very disciplined player like Dom. I feel like David, when he was in the lead, he was kind of waiting for Dom to come up and poke him a little too much because Dom knows if he overcommits even just a little bit, he would have gotten back or he would have gotten hit by an air up air or anything like that. And especially he did miss that, you know, option to go in and play a little bit more aggressive. But anyways, that was game one. This is game two. What do you think about this counter pick? Because, you know, he's not going to get let trapped a little too hard because he has that jump option onto the second platform. The platforms will definitely help in that. But uh, the overall neutral game should be um, pretty difficult. Uh, because of how flat the stage is and the low ceiling i think will definitely uh help ike with the killing um but you know if dom be able to find these ledge trap situations that you know he's known for it's gonna be very difficult yeah i would say when dom has that uh when dom has that flame out when he has the holy water out and it's not hitting you on the ledge at all that's when you're able to go off and do something but if it's on the ledge just might as well get hit get off the ledge again get your ledge invincibility back and just Play Dom's game a little bit more so you can find an opening to mix him up to get on stage. And right David's now, he's been finding his way in, but he's not been getting so much off of these straight hits. And as I say that, getting a Nair into up air, that's basically the I classic getting, you know, two hits at the most and getting some good percent. Um, and, you know, he can fi definitely find kills at this percent with a good Nair. Oh, missing oh, the missing full the up, up, yeah. But he gets that. Nair to up air killing at 100%. David having so much rage. And you can kind of see right now, even though David might be behind, he could make the comeback anytime because he's Ike. He could able to go off and edge guard uh, T3 Dom, or he could get, you know, Nair into up air again. And you see there, without the platforms, he's able to kind of find uh, the landing options and land more aggressively um, because the platforms don't inhibit him landing with a strong aerial. And we see that, you know, the short ceiling of Northern Cave is definitely going to play a part uh, into the, the killing on, on the, off the top of the up air. You can kind of see Dom keeping David at that mid-range. He's He cut off that jump with his uh, Holy Water and his, uh, and his cross. And because of that, that forced David to kind of freak out and do an approach option like roll. And again, you have to just Walk and take it. You have to walk and take and play, play Dom's game a little bit if you let him set up, you know? Yeah, and he's really getting so much off of these setups. Good Nair, air to air from Dom. He has a lead here. He's looking to extend it, it seems like. Yeah, but he Ooh. hits him with a run-up grab. That's the, that's the thing. Once, when you're so conditioned to play against Dom, playing, playing back, when he does that burst option with dash stack, when he does that burst option with uh, dash grab, it's kind of like, oh, shoot, I got hit by that. Now I'm going to be put into a worse situation. But grabs the holy water. This is such a scary spot to be in. And again, an another uh, sub 110, 150% uh, kill with that up air off the top. Uh, it's good for, for David to find these. And he can definitely bring us back with Ike if he's able to find a big open up. Oh, what? Raj is the roll read. And he almost gets the Nair to down air, but good he's job He evened up percents, essentially, with the uh, weight differential. What's the punish? Dash attack, not an up E. This is such a scary spot to be in. David now with a little bit of a lead shop of his own. The tether back from Dom. And oh, that was scary to go for a normal get up. David getting execution tested, not passing it. And here, it's just both of them swinging, trying to take center stage and get a significant hit to find the kill. Yeah, good forwarder from Dom sending David into the corner. Yeah, you can kind of see Dom playing a lot more fast right now, using a lot more empty nares and trying to fight David. David, again, rolling in. You can't really be using these first option defensive oh. moves and catches him with the up throw, with the uh, full hop up air and Dom securing that 2-0 victory. I mean, that was just really disciplined play from Dom. Um, even in a situation where he was getting ledge trap, he didn't really go for a lot of, like, very scared defensive options. And uh, DQVid, you know, he, or David, I'm sorry. Bringing it <laughs> DQVid. I always call him.